most of you probably seen these vehicles in war movies or documentaries about World War II. So let's see what is the history behind these amphibious vehicles. We're gonna start with the bigger brother, which everyone just calls Duck. But its official name, the UKW, comes from the General Motors naming scheme. D stands for 1942 production series, U means utility, K means all-wheel drive, and the W stands for tandem rear axles. Even before the start of World War II, it was apparent to many army leaders that the biggest problem in amphibious landing operations is to supply the troops and land equipment for them. This would require special vehicles to bridge the gap between the landing barges and the troops on the beach. In 1942, the Office of Scientific Research and Development recruited Rod Stevens, a yacht designer, to help create a vehicle able to carry equipment and supplies in amphibious landing operations. The idea was to turn the already proven GMC CCKV truck into an amphibious vehicle capable of tackling the ocean waves. Stevens and his team came up with the first prototype in less than 40 days. But the vehicle at first drew a lot of criticism, as it looked cumbersome, bulky and huge. Many thought it won't be any use for the army at all. Fearing that the vehicle is just another jack of all trades, master of none, the risk of having soldiers' lives depend on it was too great. The project was in the verge of being terminated, when Palmer C. Putnam, the leader of amphibious research, convinced the army for a demonstration opportunity. The trials were set on the Atlantic coast of New England. In a strange twist of fate, a storm was brewing over the coastline, which seemed to cause the trials to be cancelled. But actually it turned out to be a stroke of luck for the duck project. A coast guard ship nearby ran aground while returning to port, and that was just what Rod Stevens and the duck crew needed. They swung into action, drove the duck into the waves, and in a few minutes picked up the crew of the ship and safely returned them to the shore. With this demonstration the duck proved itself to be a very capable amphibious vehicle, and found support amongst the ranks. The duck used the same frame, engine and drivetrain as the base CCKV truck, apart from the whole vehicle encased in a watertight body and propellers installed to provide propulsion in the water. The waterproofing of the vehicle was accomplished with watertight bearings and seals, but weekly maintenance and greasing was essential to keep them in good working order. It featured the same GMC 270 petrol engine as the base truck, providing 91 horsepower. The vehicle's top speed was about 50 miles an hour on land and 6.5 miles an hour in water. The maximum safe payload was around 2.5 tons, which sadly was exceeded many times, resulting in the sinking of many ducks together with their cargo. Another unique feature of the late model ducks many people don't know about is that it could regulate its tire pressure on the fly with an onboard compressor, which was a great help on loose beach surfaces. The first big operation for the ducks came in July 1943, when they participated in the Allied landings at Sicily. 1000 ducks were used in the landings, and they proved themselves to everyone who doubted them. In the landings it turned out their usefulness and mobility was greatly underestimated. They transferred many tons of supplies, ammunition and troops to the beaches. They were extremely useful in the shallow waters surrounding the island, where the bigger landing ships had trouble navigating. After their stellar performance in Sicily, the Allied plans relied on their participation when the forces landed in Normandy. In this operation, 2000 ducks were used to supply the troops on the beachheads, delivering men and supplies between the ships and the shore, and taking the wounded out from the combat zone. After the Allies broke out from the beaches, the ducks road going capability was a real asset, as they could carry the supplies inland directly from the ships. The ducks were widely used in the Pacific as well, participating in all major landing operations. They were used at the landings at Saipan, Guam, Iwo Jima, Okinawa and many more. After World War II, there were several upgraded versions and experiments based on the duck. One of the most interesting ones was the so-called Flying Duck, featuring hydrofoils, in 1956. An upgrade over the original duck was the XM147, so-called Super Duck, developed also in the 1950s. Another interesting experiment was the XM157 Drake, but this one was too complicated and never gone into production. And of course, let us not forget the unavoidable Soviet copy of the vehicle, the Zeal 485. 
And now it's time to take a look at the little brother of the duck, the Ford GP Amphibious Jeep. After the initial first production run on the Jeep in 1941, a new project was set up for a light amphibious vehicle. Encouraged by the success of the duck, Rod Stevens was brought in to design the shape of the vehicle, similarly as he did with the amphibious truck. This really showed on the Ford GPA, as it looks like a miniature version of the duck and operated the same way. The original specification set a 2700 pound weight for this vehicle, though by the time it reached production, it was way heavier than that. There were two competitors for the production, one was the Ford Motor Company, the other is Marmon Harrington, a company specialized in all-wheel drive vehicles. We had a glimpse of one of their vehicles in my Jeep History video. If you haven't seen that yet, I recommend you watch it. See the link in the description or at the end of this video. The Marmon Harrington prototype was a unibody construction, while the Ford GPA used a conventional internal frame and chassis with welded on panels. This made the Ford version about 400 pounds lighter than its competitor. Their design also reused as many parts from the original Ford Jeep as possible to keep the cost down and ensure interchangeability. As their design seemed to be better, Ford was given the contract in 1942. Sadly, the Ford GPA was a disappointment after the success of the duck. This comes down mainly to the weight of the vehicle, which in the end was nearly 3,500 pounds, instead of the originally planned 2,700 pounds. Though the vehicle was much heavier than originally planned, the volume of the body was not increased accordingly, so its carrying capacity and seaworthiness was decreased. The changing of the body was not really an option either, as the increased size and weight with the original 60 horsepower Jeep engine and drivetrain already caused the vehicle to be heavy and unwieldy on land. Production was actually stopped after just a bit more than a year in March 1943, because of the bad reception of the vehicle and financial indifferences between Ford and the government. Altogether, 12,700 units were built, from which 4,486 were sent to Allied countries, most of them to the Soviet Union. The Soviets actually copied this vehicle as well, and built similar ones based on their own off-road vehicles. The Ford GPAs participated in the North African operations and the Sicily landings, and they served on until the end of the war. After the war, many GPAs were sold to civilians, mostly farmers bought them, but many were converted by adventurers. From these two very similar amphibious vehicles, one was very successful and the other was not, but they were both certainly unique. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.